next, uh, thank you, Kay. We have Luana Conley from Sustainable Marina, also a group that just played a pivotal, pivotal role in making sure the referendum was successful. I'm really glad to be here uh, and to talk about an issue that's really, really important to me. And uh, to see so many of you feel the same. Um, I am Luana Conley, as Amy said, and I'm facilitator for Citizens for Sustainable Marina since about 2009. And I started uh, my involvement with that group when the founder, Denise Frischmuth, came to the Marina City Council and got our mayor, Bruce Delgado, to sign the mayor's accord. And that sounded pretty good to me um, because I'd seen what uh, some of the developers, uh, the direction some of the development uh, projects had taken and the effect that they had on our town. So it sounded pretty good to get something in writing that we'd be signing on to that had uh, standards like that that we're supposed to um, uphold and adhere to. Um, so I've been, uh, lived all over Monterey Bay for quite a long time and been in Marina for about 10 years and I came over here, um, came to Marina kind of just as by accident and I was on my way back to the coast to Monterey and, and ended up just staying here because I have a vision for what that little town could be. It's a really friendly, wonderful little town and it could be the heart of Monterey Bay. And I'm here because we need you to help it become that. It could be walkable and uh, have live work uh, businesses in it and be a real true university town. And I'm not seeing that happening without uh, your help. Some of the things I'm gonna say will probably be just echoes, echo chamber of what you've already heard. But um, I've found that we almost have to become tiresome, almost bore ourselves um, out in the community by repeating things over and over and over again and hoping that it just ripples and ripples out. And uh, I saw that happen with the MST project, you know, we just kept saying build on blight first and people just got that right away. Um, right now we're surrounded by dilapidated and dangerous abandoned army buildings. Marina particularly suffers from acres of chain linked and green curtained neglected homes, cutting off our crosstown access, ruining our property values and creating a dangerous nuisance for our kids, especially the teenagers while developers ask for one extension after the other. Did you know that uh, of the 6,000 homes that the Army left behind for us to use, two-thirds of those were supposed to be rehabbed just a little bit and put on the market in the range of $100,000 to $120,000? They were relatively new 80s and 90s homes. They were solarized, brand new solar. You know what kind of shape they're in now? If you don't know, I urge you to please take a drive out there um, and look around. Have you seen what has become of the community swimming pool? It's right behind REI. Um, it's, right, it's right behind the skating rink on your way to REI if you're coming from the south. Um, pull up at that skating rink parking lot and, and just go slip through the little crack in the fence there and take a look at that. Trust yeah. <laughs> Um, you don't really need to get too close to see what it's become, but the interior of the, that is it's just wall-to-wall -wall graffiti. It's just broken down. That was a beautiful, big, what could have been a focus point for community um, building and community fun and family fun and all that, and it's just ru a ruin. The Army did not leave us blight. Fora created it. I've been closely watching the decades of neglect of the planned Central Marina revitalization the collapse of numerous proposed housing developments, and the morphing of what was once proposed as a charming live-work university villages project turned into just another half-empty, cookie-cutter, big-box parking lot. The Dunes project leaves residents and visitors with the eyesore of ruined barracks on 2nd Avenue uh, while developers wait for profit on phase one and, and uh, phase two and three. Phase one blights our landscape with its backdoor dumpsters welcoming Monterey Bay visitors. It's plain for all to see that we can't build our way out of this recession or depression, whatever you want to call it. And I've seen the hand of Fora in all these failures. Uh, and speaking of the economy of all this, I just got a, a memo from our mayor, Bruce Delgado, who reminded me that uh, the, one of the things he'd like to see is fair distribution of Fora revenue to jurisdictions producing it. Reassessment should acknowledge that Marina has provided an unreasonably high share of financing, $65 million from the city of Marina to Fora. And what have we got for it? I urge you 
to come out and drive through Marina and, and, and tell me if you can find $65 million of redevelopment benefit to the city. We still have our, our city council is in a modular building. I mean, our Chamber of Commerce building, uh, where I became very familiar with uh, Marina as an executive director for a brief period, uh, that was just a cobwebby old, uh, you know, inaccessible, just a ruined old building that they let us use. That's been torn down. I mean, we have nothing to show for $65 million. So um, I've, been I've been attending, uh, I can't say eagerly, four out of the five public meetings on this mandated reassessment. There are good parts of the plan that should be kept, and many of its failures are the result of poor implementation and lack of a transparent process. Other assumptions need complete revision. But the entire public input process on FORA reassessment has been a charade. FORA made it clear from the, outside, from the outset that they have no intention of allowing the plan to be reworked, as one letter writer said, fearing that it will completely unravel. A 19, the 1997 uh, Sierra Club agreement brought about this reassessment process. FORA has narrowly redefined the reassessment as only a report card, as Gail uh, said. The Sierra Club appears to be rather disapproving at this one-sided definition. And remember also that this plan was made before the public had seen the off-limits gated and guarded land. And there are new constituencies, new user groups, new attitudes about sprawl, and unthinkable local and global economic realities. I know um, that the university spent uh, a lot of effort trying to get the word out that we have a world theater out there, that there's a, a university center, that there's speakers, there's uh, plays, there's theater, there's music performances. We have signs and we have lights. Come on out. Because for so many years on the Monterey Peninsula, nobody went past those gates and those guards. And so this land was unseen by us. These beautiful vistas that you've seen in, in just a, a, a few of some of the magnificent pictures that Bill has, nobody's seen that before this plan was made. So uh, EMC planning uh, co was contracted by Ford to do the reassessment and run the public process. They also wrote the ba base reuse plan that's being graded now. They uh, are the city of Seaside staff support funded and managing Monterey Downs funded by and managing Monterey Downs. EMC is also managing the proposed Seaside Resort and did the CEQA for the four-door transportation net network. Um, they were contracted by FORA. Some say this has the appearance of a conflict of interest. <laughs> the timeline has been artificially rushed. FORA has known since 1997 about this deadline and only now begun the public process. The big, big hurry. We heard that a million times at these, these meetings. The comment periods were limited to about a half an hour after staff presentations for most of the two and a half hour sessions. So I, I, after having attended four of these, I could probably quote, you know, except for they changed, it, they changed it up a little bit from meeting to meeting. But I could almost quote you what they said over and over and over again for most of these public input meetings. They had background information laying out in the, the handouts. They were outdated and they remained that way through all five of the meetings. They didn't, we said, hey, these are outdated. Are you going to update the, this? Oh, we'll get, we'll get to it. Uh, what was really disturbing, one of the really disturbing things, was there were no meetings in Pacific Grove or Carmel or Carmel Valley, although four was created, two minutes, to develop and implement an inclusive concept for reuse when the base closed, recognizing that whatever takes place on Fort Ord has a major effect on everyone, on the entire Monterey Bay area. The CSUMB community was uh, away. They had just graduated. The staff and faculty were all busy with their end of semester, end of uh, academic year business. They were not able to participate in this, no time. There's no scheduled public hearing before the report is to be finalized uh, before the four board. The original plan placed an emphasis on environment and the ecosystem. Now they say, and I'm quoting, we have enough environment. <laughs> and are proposing a freeway that would destroy habitat. Animals don't live in parks or pockets of space. The, the plan required buffer zones, trail connectivity, mitigation areas, all ignored and reworked, out of public view. The plan called for a comprehensive regional approach. It's now devolved into a contest between jurisdictions as to who can grab the most land and water entitlements to profit most on future massive, unnecessary, and unwanted developments. It's essential that you weigh in with your vision. 
Let me um, just finish my paragraph, okay? Do I have a couple You're minutes? Okay, good, 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 thanks. My dramatic wrap up. <laughs> but we, we, it really is vital that you, you weigh in with your vision. Do we want the newly established National Monument to become strangled with sprawl, with horse racing, gambling, casinos, strip malls, and business parks? We're asking you uh, to plan for uh, your own Ford Ord reuse presentations to your groups, to your quilting bee, your book club, for your business associates, scout troop, host house parties, and most of all, plan a walk or a hike out there with some people that are familiar with the area if you haven't been out there. And you can um, decorate your car with beautiful one-size-fits-all bumper stickers. We love to see those Keep Ford Road Wild bumper stickers all over town. Wear a hat. They're one-size-fits-all, too. They're great uh, uh, Keep Ford Road Wild bumper stickers, I mean hats. And you can join a sustainable group in your neighborhood. There's a, eight local sustainable action groups. They're all under the auspices of uh, Citizens for, or Communities for Sustainable Monterey County. Um, so pay attention also a lot to what your local elected decision makers um, are up to and support the ones that share your vision. With a strong and vocal coalition, together we can keep Monterey County a desirable place to live, to raise healthy families, to recreate and work in a good local economy and preserve the land as it was when 30,000 soldiers lived and worked on it. To me, the vision is clear and simple. Keep Fort Ord wild. So please send in your comments to plan at four.org and you have until Friday. Thanks. Thank you, Luana. I'm now going to invite Steve Smack up here to represent uh, the Sierra Club. You know, and I just want to follow up on something Luana said. I uh, live and work. The, the Land Watch office is in downtown Salinas, and I live in, in Salinas. And the Keep Ford Ord Wild stickers are everywhere in Salinas. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable because I trail run out there and, you know, Palma High, all the moms and their SUVs. I mean, Keep Ford, you guys are really really getting the word out, so congratulations. So thank you, Steve, for coming.